Pepperan is an American cartoon series that originally aired from 1997 to the year 2000. And it isn't officially available for streaming anywhere, which is the very height of travesty. However, there is hope. You know who owns it? Disney. But Disney has been promising since November 2019 that it would add Pepper Ann to Disney Plus soon. Soon? It's been 84 years. It's been nine months. How soon is soon? I keep getting my hopes up only to have them repeatedly dashed. I must give her the gift of me. If you don't remember Pepper Ann, you might be asking yourself if she's lame, if she's cool. I'll tell you. Pepper Ann is a spunky, redheaded 12 year old girl who is too cool for the seventh grade at Hazelnut Middle School. And bonus fact, the series Pepper Ann was actually Disney's first animated series that was created by a woman. The show actually has some really solid, consistent internal world building. There are a number of recurring characters in all facets of Pepper Ann's life. There's of course her best friends, Nikki and Milo. There's her sister Moose, her mom Lydia, her aunt Janie. There's other family members. Uh, you see the same people at school. There's Principal Hickey, there's Vera, there's classmates like Dieter, Pink Eye Pete, Tessa and Vanessa. There are recurring locations such as the Greasy and Cheesy and the arcade where Pepper Ann goes to play Crunch Pod. Even within the series, there are internally consistent pop culture references depicting Pepper Ann's world. There's the TV show Crazy Twin Shenanigans with Tina and Gina. There's the band Flaming Snot. There's this comic book character called Fuzzy that Pepper Ann loves. And also, coincidentally, Pepper Ann started as a comic in the Young Miss magazine before it became a TV series. Ah, Pepper Ann is the best. She's one in a million. Would you like to sign a petition to ban sudden shouting in our school? That's it! Everyone's against me. Hallmarks of the show include Pepper Ann getting into sometimes well-intentioned and sometimes selfish, but ultimately poorly executed shenanigans. The petition didn't work. They're still making wood shop a requirement. But the kids don't want to take it. I'm 62, kid. I still have my dignity. Huzzah, fair customer. Shall I fetch ye some mutton fingers? Her best friends, Nikki and Milo, tend to serve as the voices of reason throughout, although they too have their moments. Ordinarily, I'm opposed to fisticuffs, but if you want a piece of me, Carney, let's dance! Once, I even forgot my own name, so I just told everyone to start calling me Milo. Your name is Milo. Sure, now it is. Although some of the conflicts are external, like the episode where Pepper Ann's mom gets obsessed with being on this HGTV-style show, and the episode really highlights the grown-up obsession with things like the good china, or really fancy furniture that you can't even sit on. No, PA. You can't go into the Velvet Room. It is forbidden. What? Why? It's reserved for special occasions. Which special occasions? I don't know. We've never had any. Uh, most of the conflict comes from Pepper Ann making poor choices, which ultimately causes her to learn some sort of lesson. I get it. I made it for a month's worth of slacking in one night. I am the queen of crap. Being 12, Pepper Ann deals with a lot of things related to puberty and training bras and having crushes on boys. Like, for example, she has this huge crush on an eighth grader named Craig Bean. Hey, Pearson. Nice froth. But the plots of the show are more than just buying pimple cream from the most uncool mall in town. The show deals with bigger topics, like 
cultural appropriation and growing up, uh, being the child of divorce, and even the rigid societal definitions of being masculine or being feminine. It's a very smart show. The dialogue is delivered in a very specific way, and the characters have a, a rather verbose and sometimes overwrought way of speaking that is very appealing to grown-ups and is also very entertaining. I know, it's awful, but we can summon our courage and rip the shiny cover off this shrink-wrapped palace of lies. There are also a number of like classic literature or classic film references scattered throughout each episode. I've been summoned for jury duty. Just like that Polly Shore movie. I have Stanley Streetcar with and without the Stella tattoo. Peppy, what are you doing? Shh, you're sticking with me for a while. Okay. The humor is a little absurdist, which I love. Here's the scoopage. Two days of elimination. Winners go on, losers go home. You kids want to be losers? No! Well, most of you will be. And the show often uses dreams or daydreams or hallucinations to give further perspective on the events of the plot in kind of an exaggerated and humorous way. You need to mellow out. Forget about this stupid stuff and concentrate on something else, like Craig at swim practice today. Part of the appeal of Pepper Ann is how relatable she is. She's so awkward, yet she's still very capable, and when she puts her mind to things, she can accomplish them. Pepper Ann, what has happened to you? You've turned into a confident, rope climbing, solo singing, dance asking machine. All of the characters are so well rounded and interesting. These definitely aren't stock, cardboard cut out children's characters. Except maybe Dieter, the German exchange student who is obsessed with strudel and schnitzel and various other food products. Great mother of Hesselhoff, look at all this strudel! Bonus fact! Pepper Ann's sister Moose is actually named Margaret Rose. I used to love this show. I would get so excited when I was watching the TV Guide channel. You remember the TV Guide channel. And I would see a block of Pepper Ann episodes coming up on Disney. And the show holds up. It's still funny to watch now as an adult because of the very dry nature of the humor. If you get homesick or something, muffle your cries with your pillow so I won't hear you in the next room. Night. I wish it was just available for streaming somewhere because I would love to just binge watch Pepper Ann on a Saturday morning, sitting there in my pajamas and eating Pop-Tarts. I don't think I've eaten Pop-Tarts in over 10 years. My life is devoid of joy. However, all is not lost. Dreams can come true. Disney Plus has a form on their website where you can submit the names of shows that you would like for them to add. You just have to log into your Disney Plus account and then go to help. And then from there, click on give feedback. A box will pop up and you can select the option to request a film or show. And there are three boxes where you can type in the names. And there is nothing stopping you from putting Pepper Ann in all three of those. Or, you know, Pepper Ann in two of them and the Weekenders in the third one. Just hopefully Disney Plus actually reads their requests and doesn't turn them into coleslaw. Did you know that Pepper Ann actually has a final episode that shows Pepper Ann, Nikki, and Milo 
15 years into the future and they're no longer friends. Pepper Ann Pearson! Pepper Ann, you haven't talked to your childhood friends Nikki Little or Milo Kamalani in years. Why? Uh, we just drifted apart. And also Mark Hamill is president. Well, first of all, thanks to everyone who supported my health care bill. All two of you. Where did we screw up the timeline that we lost President Hamill? Ultimately, they bond and rekindle their friendship over some hijinks at their 15-year middle school reunion, which is for 7th and 8th graders, so that way Craig Bean can be there. Guys, I'm sorry I lost touch with you. Somewhere along the line, I just forgot what your friendship meant to me. We all have to try harder from now on. The three of us together, we got something. When I watch clips from that episode now, it's almost overwhelmingly painfully nostalgic, but in a good way. And it feels like such a bold choice to end this children's cartoon series that's basically about this main character and her two best friends by showing them in their late 20s and showing that they've essentially drifted apart from each other. But ultimately, they find their way back together again. And I think that that is a really unique and interesting ending to this series. I think it fits perfectly with the overall tone of the show. And really, that's just, that's just Pepper Ann, you know? Breaking every rule and just marching in her own parade. Also, I hunted for the episode where Milo talks about the word moist, and I couldn't find it. It haunts me. Rewatching that last episode of Pepper Ann makes me want to go and visit all of my friends. So, as soon as this pandemic is over, watch out! I didn't mean that as a threat. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't mean that as a threat. I meant like watch out in, in a good way. Like watch out, I'm coming for you, but not in a threatening way. In a way that like means I'll be bringing snacks and adventure. I wonder if the neighbor on the other side of that wall can hear me. Oh my God, wouldn't it be horrible if I said, hey, I wonder if that neighbor can hear me. And then like she answered, yes, I can in like a very clear voice. And I would know that she just, she just knows all of this. <laughs> uh, never live in a semi-detached house.